Audio newsletter number 65, Mistakes Were Made During a Session. Heidi recently booked a spot where she actually had to sing. Now she's been taking vocal lessons all her life. And for the most part, when we get auditions like this, you're going up against Broadway singers. And she readily admits she is nowhere near that level. But she actually booked this, so she was really excited, except she admits she made three mistakes. I'm not that good a singer at all, so I wouldn't have even come close to booking this. Maybe if it was for a dog singer. Anyway, she wanted to share three mistakes that she made, pass it along to you via this video, just so you don't do the same thing. So for the audition that she got, they just sent out lyrics with no music attached or anything. The direction, sing in the style of Taylor Swift or Ed Sheeran. No other copy, just the lyrics. You probably didn't know this, but all growing up, Heidi used to write music. So she came up with three different melodies and then submitted it. Great so far, right? She was shocked when she booked it. And who wouldn't be, especially if you're not a Broadway singer? So leading up to the session, her agent sent her the scripts. They also sent the original audition. It was actually the same lyrics from the audition. And then they also sent copy for a 30 and a 15, 30 second and 15 second spot. And it's at that point that she began to really get nervous. She was gonna be working with a recording studio in New York that's worked with some of the most amazing and top singers in the world. Pressure was on. Now, when it came to the audition, she had no idea which melody they chose. So she worked on the three that she submitted, just in case. She timed them with the script and even did a sped up version for the 15. Let's just say she was prepared. Fast forward to the session and the engineer and the ad agency said, did you get the musical track for this? Uh, she didn't, which leads to her first mistake. Mistake number one, assuming. You know what they say about assuming. It makes a out of you and a out of me. She assumed that the client and agency would just have her sing a cappella using one of the melodies that she came up with. Instead of doing that, she should have asked her voiceover agent something. And it's a simple question. Is there any music to go along with this? Or if you think they might have actually used one of your melodies, which melody did they like? Had she done this, they would have been able to send her the music track ahead of time and she would have been even more prepared. Which is a good reminder for all of us. When you book a job, don't assume you have all the information and material you need. It's okay to ask your agent or the client to make sure. In Heidi's case, she prepared the wrong melody. She also prepared all three melodies, which was her second mistake. Mistake number two, over rehearsing. It took them the first 30 minutes of the session to have to refigure timing because she mentioned that her original audition melodies were actually coming in at seven seconds instead of the full 15. And that just wasn't gonna work. Now, quite honestly, that was on them. Finally, when they got to the singing, she said her brain was just mixed up with so many melodies that she just kept messing up. And with each mess up, she couldn't help but think that she was failing everyone. She had over-rehearsed the wrong material, is the bottom line. So the reminder here is that it's totally okay to be prepared, but when we over-rehearse, we run the risk of not being flexible and directable during the session. Oh, and not to mention that they had only booked an hour for the session. So they're now 43 minutes in, and they haven't even gotten to the voiceover part yet. Needless to say, she was getting anxious. Then they did another take of her singing, and at the end, she didn't think that she got it, and she just said, ah, right at the end, which was her third mistake. Mistake number three, verbalizing your mistake. Right after she said, uh, oh, the engineer chimed in and goes, yep, that was it. And because she verbalized that frustration, she thought the take was botched. Thankfully, she said he was a great engineer and he was able to take it out at the end. Regarding that verbalization, she knew better. She was just nervous and anxious. Happens to the best of us, especially when time starts ticking away in a session. So try not to get in your head about it. If you book something and you go through and you're thinking that it's not that good, just commit to it. When we think we make mistakes, sometimes that's only in our own minds. And verbalizing your mistake could actually mess up a take that they really liked. And that's the reminder. If we make a mistake or we think we made a mistake, carry it through to the end of the sentence. Pause, then pick back up at the beginning of the sentence. Some people like to say pick up and then start again. That's an old school term. You can use it. Feel free. The engineer isn't going to ding you for it. But if you're silent and you just go back to the beginning of the sentence, they know where to edit. Heidi came to me afterwards and she was really bummed about that session. Felt like she let everyone down. And then she also almost made the agreement with herself that she will never audition for a singing role again. Not a good agreement to make. Oh, and the other thing that she said about the whole session is that somebody was in there from the agency that she had worked with five years ago. Knowing somebody in a session like that just adds to the pressure because you don't want to let them down. Our goal for every booked session is to make the job go as easily and smoothly for the client as possible. You do that, it's less stressful for everyone. And thank goodness for those studio engineers, the ones who do this day in and day out. They are our best friends and our lifesavers. So the takeaway after having a day to process everything that went on, she gave herself some grace. 
which is something we all should practice for ourselves. And in doing that, there were some great takeaways. Number one, this would be a great thing to share with you. Number two, it was a good reminder for her and for me. Number three, it made her see what skills are actually required for singing in voiceover commercials, which aren't always the skills that you learn from singing lessons. And four, per Jacko Willink, the Navy SEAL, taking extreme ownership of what she didn't do well and give herself grace at the same time, allowed her to grow from this experience and come to the next one being an even better talent. It's pain that we experience like this that helps us to grow if we pay attention and we give ourselves grace. Aim for excellence, but mistakes are going to happen. And when they do, the most constructive thing to do with those mistakes is to learn from them. Hey, if you got something out of this video, send it to another voiceover talent you think may get something out of it. And if you get some value from this channel, I'd appreciate it if you like it and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching. Not sure if you know this, but if you ever want to train with a professional, you can always go to atlantavoiceoverstudio.com and click on private coaches in the menu. Yeah, we have a full list of coaches who will meet up with you live on Zoom and help you work on whatever you need. Whether you're trying to master the conversational natural read, you want to practice bringing a script to life as opposed to just reading it. Or if you'd like to make sure that your home studio is set up properly, we have a private coach for that. We're here to help you on your VO journey.